oh, do I really need to be in 4K? <laughs> I'm here in beautiful Central Park and today the plan is to try to use a wide lens. That was my idea, was to come out and just shoot, not just wide, like super wide. And for that I actually needed to bring the Sony a7 III because with, it has the Tamron 17-28 to because I don't, the widest I have, I also brought my, you know, I gotta, <laughs> don't tell anyone right here. Uh, the widest I have for Fujifilm is um, the 12 millimeter Rokinon lens, but the colors on that guy are so pukey. So I really haven't been using that. And I also have the 16 millimeter 1.4, but um, that's not as, I wanted to go super wide, man, super wide. The sun in my face, it's, the sun is still in my face. And the challenge is sometimes there's a lot of stuff on top. You know, if your interest is in the center of the photograph, Sometimes there's too much stuff on top and too much stuff on the bottom. So for those, any, any image you see that is wide, that means there was too much sky and not enough interest at the bottom. So that's something you could do with your photographs is, you know, shoot 16, you know, shoot wide, but then you can crop them 16-9 and some of those look like good panos. pretty this is guys wow it's like perfection fall in New York City is amazing if you ever have the chance to come here or anywhere in New England the Northeast Canada look for maple leaves it's a uh, it's just a wonderful time you know I'm never like ready for fall and then it hits and I'm just like oh I love it pie leaves why pie that was so random I guess I want pie <laughs> Okay, it's kind of working. Um, the challenge is everything is so far away when you shoot really wide. So you kind of have to come, I, I feel like I have to be a little bit more creative with the compositions. So there was a shot that had, I put something straight stack in the middle and had my subjects be left and right. That was one idea I had. And the other thing I keep doing is I keep getting really low to the ground. So super wide compositions are challenging, but I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure it out. Okay, let's do some more. You know, the other thing is I found it's cool to get really close to objects in the foreground and sometimes that works with the wide lens you kind of you know oh, I'm so tired now there's a lot of dogs in central park if you come sunday morning or any morning and the rule is you're supposed to have your dogs on leash and i think there's a general kind of agreement you know, with New Yorkers, that if you can control your dog, then that's fine. Just your dog is under control. But people who can't control their dog just have them off leash and one dog almost drowned. And sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Anyway, I found that I started putting dogs in my composition. And actually, if a dog came up to me, I would just photograph them. Uh, usually I don't do that. But if you're going to have your dog off leash, brah, it's going to become an automatic subject for me. So... <laughs> Control your dog. Look how pretty this tree is, guys. Look how beautiful this is. <laughs> uh, there was also some light coming through a couple of places. You know, it was supposed to be a cloudy day, but 
if the shafts of light come through, they give your photographs a little bit more interest sometimes than a cloudy, you know, so I found that I was liking the ones in which the sun was bursting through. I was also, the other thing I did today was I stopped shooting at f4, f2.8. I just put everything at f11, f16 and uh, have fun with it. Have fun with it. Everything in focus. And another trick I was playing around with was slower shutter speeds to get bikers or joggers to be a little bit of a blur or a little point of interest. Sometimes that's fun if you, actually that was by accident. I was, uh, had my aperture all the way up to f16 or so and when you put your aperture up so high it just lowers your shutter so it was kind of a bit of an accident that was great but i'm cold all right see you guys next time